The Southern and Middle Belt Leaders Forum has described the governor of Delta State, Senator Dr. Ifanyo Koa, as a traitor for accepting his nomination as vice presidential candidate to Atiku Abubakar in the forthcoming 2023 general elections. The group said Okoa was among the governors who agreed that power should be rotated to the southern part of the country based on the principle of fairness, justice and equity, adding that accepting the, to be the running mate of the northern candidate was unfortunate. Afeni Fere, uh, in a joint statement, said Okoa was jeopardizing the political future of the people from the southern parts of the country. Well, joining us to discuss this, uh, Odozi Mwodozi, he's a former president of Ohanez Indibu FCT chapter, and Oladotun Hassan, he is the global president of the Yoruba Council uh, Worldwide. Thank you so much, Mr. Hassan, for joining us. Well, well it's a pleasure to be on your program. Great. And in honor. Great. Um, Let's start by this position um, from Afeni Ferre. Uh, of course, Mwodezi is going to speak on Ohanese's uh, position. Uh, why is Okowa being seen as a traitor, even though it's been clearly stated that he was part of those who asked for power to be rotated to um, you know, the, the South? Uh, but we also see that most of these Southern candidates did not necessarily make the court, except for, those, uh, for the, the candidate of the All Progressive Congress and, of course, uh, Governor Peter B of the uh, uh, Labour Party. Well, I, I, I must, uh, of course, acknowledge the fact that uh, the elders of the Balland, uh, which is led by the Attorney Ferry and uh, under the energies of Pa Ayom Adebanjo, uh, whom in their wisdom feel the need to give the South Eastern Party uh, due um, recognition when it comes to the political rotation of rot uh, on the presidency. But uh, be that as it may, uh, the Afeni Ferry endorsement uh, is not a caveat against the fundamental right of other political interests, especially uh, considering the, the, uh, the, um, the politicking and all the all processes that led to the emergence of presidential candidates and vis-a-vis uh, uh, -vis the vice presidential candidate that is of the PDP and, and that of all other political parties in the same way. Um, to us from the Yoruba Council worldwide, uh, we don't feel um, um, slighted by the fact that uh, Okua is elected by the party. Uh, and I don't see him as a traitor my own capacity, I don't see him as a traitor. He has only played uh, the, into the, through the rules and uh, interests of the party. There are a lot of Southeastern candidates that uh, vie for the election. But the delegates elected those that they feel that have the highest leader when it comes to money or when it comes to the political interest or the political promotion. So for any reason whatsoever, if you are not a party, a, 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 an active player in that political party, you, can, you don't have the right of challenging them. Except you go and pick up the card of that party, then you can now begin to express your right. All but right. be that as it may, even at that end, the, 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 the demand for vice president from the PDP shouldn't even be something that should be negotiated upon if PDP were to have been given ticket because initially they had wanted to zone the party's interest to the southern region. Later they opened it, later they zoned it to the north part. Uh, and it, will, it is also going to upset the, 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 the balance structure of the outgoing government, which is from the northern region. We cannot serve the region for eight years, uh, 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 and another eight years again for another northern man. It's not possible. So PDP uh, would have played a traitor game rather than writing it on Okoa. Okoa has nothing in this interest. Just as the APC did the same thing, it would have fallen on the, on the Senate president. It had allowed the, the national chairman to naturally choose the man. Uh, in question. But be that 
as we believe, let not overheat the policy. Okoas has the fundamental right. He let him play by the rules. It's partly from the ego. It's partly from the South East and South South, just like we had Jonathan. I, I, I want to come in. I want to come in quickly. I want to come in quickly. You, okay. made, you made very interesting points about the fact that Okoa is just being a party man. Um, and, and just for just as you made reference to the elders of the uh, Afedi Ferry group, um, I'm guessing that also you have members of Afedi Ferry or people from the southwest and the south south and the southeast in the PDP, as you also have them in the APC and every other political party. And I'm just curious. If they had pulled their weight, if they had done the, the groundwork, would, would a southern candidate not have emerged? Or, again, like we always say, no. politics is a game of numbers. So no, why no. begrudge an Okoa when, within the party, yes. those who are from the, yes. the zone did not necessarily do their homework? I'm just asking. No, 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 no. Let us take it from this perspective. The best bet of the Eastern candidate or Eastern aspirant would have been Peter Obi of the, from the PDC if he had not become to the Labour Party. The, the orit, the campaign of uh, Peter Obi of some of the expectations of the elder or some other interest within the, the enclave of the PDC. Yes, we have the fire dying fire. We have all other aspirants, aspirants that contested that are from the Eastern zone. For being that as it may, the elders of our periphery have the uh, opportunity to look at another candidate from another political party from the Eastern zone. It is their will, it is their interest. We are not competing that with them. We are not running conflict with the elders as a group within the Southwest region. From our own region and our own organization, we believe that power should be retained in South West. We have a divergent opinion, and that does not make us a traitor to the elders. We are only believing that, oh, from the party, from the ruling party, there is more structural political advantage for us to lean on where it is very possible to achieve power with little or, or less effort than going to a total um, political party whose region is just produced the, 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 the incumbent president. We cannot support on that basis. We also had our own, had our own reason, which does not make us a traitor. So, just as you have rightly said, Okoa interest is interest of the PDC. It is now beyond of PDP on how they, can, or how they campaign in the South East, South South, and South West, North Central, North East, and North West. So it's a political space that is open for all. Nigerians have opportunity to vote freely, but, from, but for us from Yoruba land, we cannot have our own son and throw him away, just like the Eastern people are protecting their own son. It is not about ethnicity, yeah? it's about competency and competitive advantage. From the southwest, we have a candidate that will pull the entire nation from a strategic aspect. He has the well with that experience. He has the, the, the structures. He has done it before. And we believe, giving him the opportunity, seeing his own long life as a uh, vision as well, let him also have the opportunity to start. Within four years, if he perform excellently well, who will tell him to his face? And if he does not, who will protest to the street? But can Nigeria, can Nigeria afford another, another, you know, um, false start, or rather, uh, another, you know, uh, let's trying our luck to see if this person does right, um, and hoping that the person does right. Can we afford that for another four years? Looking at where we are as a country, in every wise. Again, I want to take you back to what you said, that if um, Peter Obi was still in the PDP, he would have been a, a better candidate. But if Peter Obi stayed within the People's Democratic Party as against those who run, as, as against the person who emerges as the flag bearer, 
would he have even stood a chance in the first instance? Um, and looking at where he is now, doesn't he stand a better chance? Yes, I'm with you. Did you hear my yeah. question? Yeah, you know, for me, I still believe that we cannot be discussing PDP up here if you are not a card carrying member of that political party. I am not a card carrying member of APC. We only believe that of the internet. I have always been a member of the PDP. I ran for Senate under PDP. But I have a choice beyond the political party I belong. It is not a matter of political party, now. it's a matter of interest. You can vote for uh, House of Assembly that you have interest in. I don't vote for the governor. Nigerians are now wiser now. We're not just going to be voting blanketly. But it's better we vote those that have competence and the capacity to serve. So for us, it's a matter of not overeating the policy and letting us have too much ethnic coloration. Okay. And I don't want people to misquote us that for us supporting a tragedy of you know, we predicated on ethnic coloration. No. But at the same time, but, you just, sounded, but you just sounded that way, don't you? There's a need for balancing You, you just equation. sounded that way, more like, well, we in the Southwest would vote for this person <laughs> and give this person a chance. And those in the South, they should do this, are doing the same for their brother, which makes this uh, election, um, you know, have a lot of question marks. But just hold that thought. We'll take a quick break, and when we come back, we'll conclude on this conversation. Stay with us. It's still plus politics, and we are speaking on the issue of uh, the deputizing of the former vice president of uh, Nigeria, who is now the candidate for the People's Democratic Party's presidential uh, ticket. And of course, uh, Ohane Zindibu and Afeni Ferre have referred to Governor Okoa as a traitor for accepting to play a second fiddle. Well, we're being joined right now by Mwodozi uh, Odozi, who is the former president of Ohane Zindibo FCT chapter, and we still have been talking with Olado Hassan, who is of the uh, Yoruba Council Worldwide. Mwodozi, um, it's interesting that a certain group of uh, the Igbo extraction had at some point um, reached out to Governor Ifanyo Kowa, appreciating him um, for for being um, the running mate of former Vice President Atiku Abubakar for the PDP ticket. And then here we are calling him a traitor. And I'm wondering, why is Governor Koa referred to as a traitor in this regard? Mr. So Wadozi, can you hear me? Yeah, I'm hearing you clearly. I'm here. Okay, go ahead. First of all, let me say something. Uh, the group, the group that congratulated Dr. Ifanyo Kowa, we are not the mainstream or another youth group. However, there is a lacuna, and the lacuna is this: there was a rushed congratulatory message by the National Publicity Secretary of Ohaneze Nibo, to Alex Obonia. And that was followed immediately by the outright reprimand of the Southern and Middle Belt leaders, which Edwin Clark and Paayo Adebanjo are leading. So, and this is as a result of a second meeting that has been following up since 2017 aimed at making sure that in 2023, an evil man comes out as the president of Nigeria. If you remember, in 2019, Christian Southern and Middle Bell Leaders Forum, on shaking me, gave their support to Al Haji Atiku Abubakar. And that that support they made it clear that time that in twenty twenty three 
the next president of Nigeria will be from the South. Okay. And there was an unwritten agreement that the evil extraction, the South East, the evil of the South East, to produce the president of Nigeria from 2023. Surprisingly, we should recall also that Dr. Kowa, as the governor of Delta State, convened and hosted the meeting of the southern governors right there in his capital, Asada, where they came out with a communist that demanded that the presidency of Nigeria must come from the south in, from the south from the south in 2023. How come that suddenly Dr. Kowa is celebrating his being chosen as a vice to Allah Haji Atiku Abubakar for the 2023 election? Mr. Wadozi, I want to ask a question. It's an operation. You and I watched. Yeah. You and I watched. The whole country watched while the presidential primaries of the People's Democratic Party took place. Where were the people of the southern and the middle belt during that primaries? We Good. saw. We saw those candidates I, I from that you. region. I want to thank you for that. Um, fall very out on, on that brilliant. primary, and then of course the emerging candidates, which was the vice president, um, was the man with the highest votes. Where were the votes of very these people who were pushing very, very for a southern candidate? Very brilliant question. Uh, now let me tell you something. If Hello. the vote of the South cannot produce a president, if the vote, if the vote is mostly without a vote of the other side. Now, the Southern and Middle Bear leaders are not politicians. They are male elders and opinion molders. The political actors in the game, we are the government. Can you ask Dr. Kowa where the, where the vote of his delegate went? You see, he failed to produce the southern solidarity. If he had used the force with which he, he can vote for vice presidency, to can vote for the president of Nigeria coming from the south, we will not be where we are today. Hmm. Rather, he chose, he chose to play second fiddle. Have an issue by supporting Atika Abubakar with the aim that at the end of the day he will be chosen as the vice president. I wouldn't call him a traitor, though, because he made his choice. But that choice is for the choice of his people. That choice is selfish. Okay. And it also makes us, it, makes, it becomes more laughable. It becomes more laughable with, a, with, with, the, with excellency. After I find your call, coming up after he's been selected as the vice presidential candidate. To now say he's evil and nobody can count him out. Ask my governor. I am from Delta, I'm from Ananyoma, man from Delta State. Hmm. Precisely, I'm from Ambo. Ask him for the first. Eight years. Has he paid the one million naira that every state governor of the seven of Ohanese state paid into the compact of Ohanese? So, so this is and an Ohanese issue as opposed to him standing by oh, no, no. the wishes of no, the he south, claimed, he claimed, east, or the I'm, southwest. I'm, 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 no, 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 no. He, I'm, 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 I'm referring to what to, to his own state standard. He said he's an evil man, and nobody can deny him for that. So, has he been saying he's weak? Okay. If you're a family member, have you been doing your duty, performing your duties and obligations in that family? Okay. And it's a surprise. So let us not come to let us let him not tell us about that issue. Because if you raise credibility, credibility matters as a gas is ambitious. All right. Back to the matter of the southern middle belly. In one problem. sentence, because we're out of time. Okay. Maybe some other time we'll discuss it. But the truth is that Okowa has not done well. Okay. By refusing to support his brother or himself, presenting himself for the for the position, okay. but as he fell back, 
bring a crumb of vice president. The southern part of Nigeria say no. All right. And I am happy that for the first time, the middle belt and the minority of the north I join the southern part of the to say a big no. Okay. Well, I want to say thank you, gentlemen, because we are out of time. Modozi Odozi is the former president of Ohanis Indigo FCC chapter, and Olado Tunhassan is the global president of Yoruba Council Worldwide. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for speaking with us, but time is up. Thank you. Well, that's it on the show tonight. It's been Plus Politics. Tomorrow we'll return at 7 p.m. to talk for development on the biggest political issues across the country. I'm Mary Anna Cohn. See you tomorrow.